So, I, I'm going to deviate from my notes a bit tonight because I sense that the Lord will have us do so. I just put something up on the group, an image on the group, and it says, pray until your aura changes. Pray until your aura changes. Now, I know and this is important because of the time in which we're living. And this is one of the reasons we have drank, uh, we drag the chant and the singing and uh, just flowing with the spirit. But I sense that one of the reasons he will have us do so is get us to the place where our aura, our posture has changed and the energy we radiate, our self-image has, has, has been transformed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Maraguro Varadina. I was talking about in this generation, this time and age, we have a lot of prayer. And a lot of prayer that we have right now is channeled at our circumstance, channeled at changing things as outside, channeled at solving problems, channeled at healing situations, channeled as provisions, channeled for other things outside. And um, not enough of it is channeled to internal transformation. And this is important because when we reach critical juncture as we find that we are as a people now we are in a major junction where we are a generation is about to cross a threshold and break into realms of glory break into destiny break into purpose break into inheritance and allotment and begin to do the things that was assigned for them to do and begin to bet realities that were written in their scrolls according to the volume of the books that was written concerning them when such a time comes because of the the strain of birth pangs, it becomes necessary that we rechannel a lot of our prayer into the the enterprise of our soul into the enterprise of, of of transformation of internally adjusting our mindset granting us strength grace will and sight so that we may be able to birth see touch and feel and sense and cooperate with the divine if not we will not come into destiny and i sense that the lord will have us go in this direction this evening because somebody here is at the cusp is at the cross is at the precipice of delivery and strength is beginning to fail and and confusion is beginning to get into the mind because we have primarily taught that the purposes of prayer is to pray and so that you get what you pray for your prayer points are answered and but you're finding that the prayer points are not being answered and you're wondering what is happening you're, you're, you're going from one textbook to the other one scripture to the other one message to the other one hand being laid after the other and things don't seem to be getting better it seems like you are just being vexed and you are you are it's really becoming more or more difficult to trust and to pray and at times like these thank you holy spirit when Jesus found himself at the Garden of Gethsemane, he first started praying. He said, if it is your will, let this cup pass over me. But he came back and said, my soul is sorrowful unto death. Have you ever been in that position where you find that your soul is deeply sorrowful? You've praised God. You've given thanks. You've worshipped. You've quoted the scripture. But there is just a lingering sadness a foreboding that just won't go away. You've sown seeds. Your pastor has prayed. Your partner has prayed for you. Friends, family. But that nagging feeling will not go away. May I be, as, be the one to suggest to you that perhaps you are in a position and in a place of travail. Perhaps there is an inevitability that is coming to your direction that is not very palatable. And you need to pray. You need to pray to reduce the strength of the waves that inevitably will come. You need to pray to reduce your, uh, your, your weakness and come into strength. Your aura changes from that of a dove because a dove is beautiful. A dove is good. A dove is necessary. But when a storm comes, you don't need a dove. You need the eagle to soar. When war comes, no, you don't need a dove. In war, you need a lion to rise up. And you need to pray. You need to pray. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. I will not be moved. Blessed is the man whose trust is in the Lord. He is Mount Zion that cannot be removed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
and we begin to press and we begin to push and we begin to pray until we find ourselves in that beautiful place where strength has returned, peace, and that nagging feeling of foreboding, that nagging feeling of unease has eased. So that when bad news comes, we are not taken over by it. Please, I understand that we've come from a culture and a teaching and a system where big zaga brogo braga zige vige zana zogo bologova gen zakite pufanak sik song sang sege bele dai. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The situation is, and haven't seen what the situation is, then you now know what to do. After David encouraged himself in the Lord, and he changed his attitude to the point where he was able and willing to hear what the voice of God, because the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord their God is one. Because the word Shema in Hebrew is the word to hear and obey. In the Hebrew, it's not just hear, it is to hear and obey. So if you are going to hear the Lord, it presupposes that you are going to obey the Lord. But if your soul is not in a disposition, position to obey the Lord, that the first thing you have to do is to prepare your soul to go and seek the Lord. And the way you do that is to begin to charge yourself in tongues and by the declaration of the word and by the seeping in of spiritual energy from spiritual sound and vibrations until your soul has shaken off the dust that is making it dull, sad and untrustworthy of the Lord so that you can come and hear the word of the Lord and then you come into prayer. And the Bible says, after David encouraged himself in the Lord and he remembered the goodness of God, he remembered the Lord, his shepherd, who, gave him, who led him against the lion and against the bear. The Lord, his God, who led him into battle, the great warrior, El Gibor, who led him against the giant Goliath. The Lord, his deliverer, who delivered him many times from the hands of his enemies. The Lord, the mighty God of Jacob, who gave him a possession among the mighty at his tender age, who made him amongst the kings and gave him the daughter of a king as a bride. He began to recount the goodness of God and he stood strengthened himself in the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he prayed until his aura was changed. And the Bible says Jesus prayed until the fashion of his countenance was changing. And as he changed his garment, then Moses and Elijah in their own glory appeared because now he was wearing the right garments to receive instruction. I put it to you that you have not heard what you desire to hear from the Lord many times because we have not prayed into the right aura, the right mindset. Ox, eagle, lion, man. 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 Ox, eagle, lion, nakak. Siaka, panaka, fine, kataka. Zega, ziga, zaga, zuga. Zaga, zaga, duga, vaga. Siaka, zaga, bega, buga, vrasi, ananta, labate. You don't go with mortal flesh to take something from the coals of fire. No, sir. It will burn you. You have to come into your, your garment of fire. You don't go to the heights where the eagles stay to hear a word of prophecy and you go there as a dove. No, sir. As a man, no, sir. You come into your garment. You come into your aura of the eagle and you ascend. And in that place of worship and levitation and lifted high, you can hear the sounds and your soul is opened up to receive the breath of Yahweh that extends your wings and like an eagle, you begin to soar the more. Ah! That we will understand that there is a preparation to prayer, a preparation to hear the voice of Yahweh that is like the sound of many waters. Oh, there is a preparation. For a mortal body cannot hear and stand the sound of the voice of Yahweh. And so we prepare. 
The Lord is the strength of my salvation. The Lord is the light of my life. Zaka poka varasina. You feel sapped. You feel sucked away. You feel all your effort is being taken for granted. Zeka balata. The Lord is the light of my life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the glory and the lifter up of my head. My glory cannot be swallowed up. I 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 cannot be swallowed up. And you chant and you say and you speak and you declare until your soul recovers itself and regains its senses. Arika panaka palatia zakata tiata do my soul is dragged to hell. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He is the glory and the lifter of my head. I lift up my head. I lift up my head to the hills from where I come in my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Which man shall I fear? He did not make the heavens and the earth. Let him be scattered. Let him be moved. Let the wind blow him away. Let him thunder and tumble and stutter and stammer. For the Lord is with me. And you strengthen yourself in the Lord. Because sometimes the command of the Lord is hard. And so you need to be in the place of strength to receive it. So that the thing that you are pursuing to hear does not become the judgment that is held against you. And comes as something that is counted against you. And so you prepare yourself to go and ascend the mountains of Zion. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Man, eagle, ox, lion. Man, eagle, ox, lion. When Ezekiel had his vision in Ezekiel chapter 1, Marakur Varasile talked about the cherubims that he saw. Vara Esgine Erianda Bala Anika Bara Asi and their terrible, frightening form. Jacob Beregari Gadina Haragana said the form of their faces was that of a man, and each of the four had the faces of a lion on the right side, and the faces of an ox on the left side, and also the faces of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread upward. Marakata, each one had two wings, touching the wings of the creatures on each side. The two wings covering its body. Each creature went straight ahead. Whether the spirits would go, they would also go without turning as they moved. Now you notice that they had a face for each direction, front, back, side, left, right. And so if they, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. On the front side was a face of a man, and if they needed to go forth, they had that face. And behind was Ika Braga Zuga Varazine Erianta Fuka Bragazine Erianta. The reason I'm bringing this up are these are the creatures that are before the throne, and we are creatures for the presence, for the presence, for the presence, for the most high. And in the like manner, many times when we want to approach the Lord and the purposes of the Lord and the word of the Lord, we need to come in a different form because what is required is different. There are times we need to come like an ox, a beast of burden, because the Lord is in receiving, needs to dish out instruction, and he needs us to carry that strength, the burden. And so we need to be strengthened with might in our inner man. We need to have moved our aura, our thinking, our mindset, our perception to the place where we say we are able to do. And yet we know what is willing, what, what we need to do, and then we carry it and we go on. And there are times where we need to come like a man with reason. Riga, braga, zika, bruga, zaka, var we also need a measure of preparation strength because as we interact oh thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit now one of the reasons we need to prepare the bible says um oh thank you this scripture, the candle of the spirit of the Lord is of the man is the candle of the Lord. Rekatita, searching all the inward paths. Reka barakata, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Is like the rivers of water. Wherever he will, let he make it flow. Paka zenga zaga brogo zige zaga daragaro zuga vanazile. Emra hasi ke valiga na zongza geske bele anja uske vinza agadine. Emra kazine eriganzo uke varazine eriganza haladina. Ananko braga zige dile krako zuga varagazine erianda baka buka. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 
Someone's spirit is just being light lit now. Your candle is being lit. Marazina Haragata, and by that revelation is coming again. Where there was darkness, light is beginning to come. You see, when you approach the Lord as a man, you approach the Lord as a candle to be lit, to be set on fire, to be lit with the revelation, with the light and the understanding of Yahweh. Reka Pakatina, you can no longer think as Adam. You cannot you, you can only think as Christ. Because if any man be in Christ, in the new Adam, the old Adam is dead and its systems and his thinking. The new Adam, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, the last Adam is here. And we need to begin to think in the form and of that Adam. And this needs preparation. Because when God wants to talk, he is talking to you in Christ. My God, thank you, Father. You know, there's a scripture that says, Jesus, ah, Marka Brogoziga Let me not put too much uh, uh, at the same time. But I hope we, we, we're getting what we're saying that the need to prepare. The need to prepare. Because sometimes you will come, uh, there, there, there are four phases. Different things are needed at different times. And it is important for us to prepare. We see the life of David. We see the life of Jesus. These two people in the Old and the New Testament, how they had to prepare themselves to receive the word of the Lord, to engage properly. And so, this is why you have a prayer point, something you want to pray about. And you've prayed for one hour and you don't yet feel like you've prayed. Has anybody had that feeling before? You've prayed for one hour. And usually one hour should delay it, but it doesn't feel as if you have even touched your list at all. The reason is that there is a preparation of the heart. And what you have been engaging in is trying to prepare and set yourself in the right place. Because sometimes you need to be at peace. Sometimes you need to be in the garb of a warrior, ready to declare and shut and cut down. But sometimes you need to be at peace because of what needs to be said because of what is required at that moment. And so the, 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 the prayer and the speaking in tongues and the declaration, the mood is to get you in peace. There are times I come, I'm ready, I'm charged to pray, and I just feel, lie down. And I lie down and gather my soul. Now the Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as what? Your soul prospered. This is very important that he says, I wish above all things, prosperity is his wish that you might prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Now we know today that the soul is affected by many things. By uh, As we go out and engage in the world today, the words that people say, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And that is good and that is true. But the words other people speak to you also contain energy that affects your soul. The words you hear in music that have been demolically chanted, they also are release energy. And so your soul is scattered and is not in order. And so you just don't jump into prayer with your soul all over the place. You will not make progress in prayer that way. Many times you need to gather back your soul into one place and so at times the Lord will have you calm down and gather and pray in tongues and listen to sound and worship until your soul returns because in the engagement of the day you saw this movie and you saw that movie and you entered this gist and you talked and you laughed and, and you just noticed that your soul is depleted it has spread itself to thing it is not unlimited and consequently there is nothing to, to bring before the presence when you come and your prayer cannot be effective that way. When you find yourself in those kind of situations, you need to gather yourself. You're feeling sad and depressed and listless and life is gone. It happens. It happened to David as we see in the Old Testament scripture. So what you need to do is gather yourself. There are times when words are, which are necessary. The Bible says bring with you words. But there are times when you don't need words. What you need is energy. I was traveling the other day over the weekend and I got some news that really just took, it was listless. And so when I look, ah, I said, no, I just quickly put on some sound. I, I, uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I plugged it to my ear and I started listening. I started listening to the message and the sound. I wasn't listening to words. It was the energy from the teaching that was necessary. And by the time it was done, I had been praying in tongues and praying in tongues and praying in tongues. I had no logical reason why my soul should be in a different position. That is the problem we make many times. We are not the first Adam. We are not a, a products of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. Everything does not have to be broken down to reason and logic. There are some things. It says the peace that passeth understanding. 
you must come into the new Adam to be able to function in these days gross darkness will cover and so because gross darkness covers you have to have your own light inside that causes you to see in the darkness because he is the Lord even the darkness is playing before him he is in the light oh and you over lucky brega zega braga doga braga ziga zega bega moka braga ziga raga duna braga zina haragate Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. And so you begin to listen to the sound to draw energy. Stop thinking. Stop processing. Stop trying to sort it out. There are something you you cannot sort it out. So leave there are things is good to reason. And I'm not saying don't reason, don't plan, don't process. You would need to do that. But there are times where you need you 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 you've, it's not working, and you can feel your energy going down the drain. Leave it aside. Look for energy to feel and energize your soul till your soul regains itself again, and you begin to declare words, words words and pray in tongues and declare words and listen to message, listen to sound, spiritual things that re-energizes you, which is why the believer needs to be careful as what you need. Sometimes you finish praying and you just watch something and all your spiritual energy is drowned, is drained away because that thing is negative. So in the same way, there are sources that are, find your sound, find the message. Sometimes it's my own message. Last like I was saying, as we're traveling, it was Thursday Spirit Lounge session. I plugged into my ear and play. Why? Because it was the and there's an anointing that came for it. It doesn't matter that I was the one who spoke. I spoke by the anointing of God. And so I needed that energy. I needed it. And so I sat there for about an hour, taking it, praying in tongues as I traveled until my soul was gathered, strengthened again. And then I was able to see the light and step out of the situation and sort the thing that needed to be sorted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because sometimes you are, we are like Moses, crying to the Lord and saying, Lord, can't you see there's a red sea before us? And the Lord is saying, why are you talking to me? Command the sea to pass. What's your problem? Because you have been taken in so much of the situation, you have forgotten what the rod in your hand can do. And you've forgotten who you are. And it's the same way God was expecting Moses to part the Red Sea. In some situations, he is not expecting us to pray to him. The real thing we need to do is prepare ourselves, regather our souls. Remember the strength of the Lord. Remember the things that he has done. And then we are able to address the situation. Or then we are able to talk to God properly. Because many times the thing we call prayer is not prayer because we are not talking to God. We are talking to our houseboy. We are talking to our boss in the office. We are talking to our boyfriend. You are not talking to God. Because when you come to God, you must come to him what? As God. He says, they that come seek him must come to him as God. They must believe that he is God and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Consequently, you must come to him with reverence and respect and understanding of his personality and with the full confidence that he rewards those who diligently seek him. And if you find that your soul is not in that position and you're feeling quarrelsome towards God, your first position is not to go and utter empty words. Jesus said, do not be like the Gentiles who think they will be heard for their many empty words do not bring empty words words before God. You gather your soul. You prepare yourself. The preparation of the heart. You prepare yourself. And so you sit down and you begin to pray in tongues. Sometimes the tongues feel dead. It doesn't matter. It's not about feelings. There is energy in it. You continue. Oh, praise God. Sometimes all you can say is praise God. I've been in that situation before. All I can say is praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. And I will chant that one word or one phrase until life and energy becomes begins to enter back and I will look for a sound and boost my energy because I cannot go to God as a man. I cannot go to God as somebody I have a quarrel with. I cannot go to God as my boss in the office. I cannot go to God as my pastor who is limited in his knowledge and understanding or as my friend or as my spouse who is limited. There is a time for all of that interaction with the Lord. We have to come to him with reverence. Preparation. Preparing to pray. Preparing to pray. And so we must prepare ourselves. It is critically important. 
Because many times all we're doing is just noise. Complaining and ranting and, and just hollow emptiness that is not, does not come from the place of understanding. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so we can have long vigils that we pray for many hours. But we have not come to God as God. We have not prepared ourselves to come and meet the God of the heavens and the earth. Consequently, we are just rambling. Jesus called them empty words. We are just making ourselves excited with words. And at the end of our prayers, we are not changed. The situation is not changed. Heaven is vexed. Hell is excited. And we are frustrated. So, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh my, time is fast spent. Makatele braga zuga vaga ziga dana kara boru zaga vika tara dara doa. Seketona vinga zaga dosha nanka baru zuga vasha dina hara duro vara gazira hara gante. Menkan tan krusi vige dana kara garo zuva raga dina eri anta baga duna vara dine. Some of us need to pray to receive strength because when you're going to prayer, you might hear that you are the reason you are in the problem that you are. That your inability to obey the last few instructions is the reason that has brought you here. What are you going to do with that information if you hear it so? What are you going to do with the information if you hear that this, this, you have just entered the season and that you should prepare yourself for a difficult season for the next few weeks? So you need to prepare yourself so you don't go and hear what will, will just, as the Germans will say, what will caput you. There is a preparation to pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. First time we hear the word pray in the Bible is in the book of Genesis. It's not the first time a prayer was offered, um, but the first time the phrase pray was used was used by God Himself, and it's very significant that we pay attention to it. It's in the book of Genesis, chapter 20, by 7. And we know the whole story of Abraham, how he left and went to Egypt and dealt with Abimelech. And said early, um, so we read from verse 6. Then God said to or to give it some context, let's read it from verse 1. Now Abraham journeyed into the region um, of the Negev and settled between Kadesh and Shaw while he was staying in Gera. Abraham said to his wife Sarah, She is my sister. So Abimelech, king of Gera, had Sarah brought to him. One night, however, God, uh, God came to Abimelech in a dream and told him, You are as good as dead. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining it in Nigerian language. Oh boy, you don't finish. <laughs> Your own don't end. <laughs> so you are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Now Abimelech had gone near, had not gone near her. So he replied, Lord, 
would you destroy a nation even though it is an inno- it is innocent now you can imagine the wisdom of the king god said you <laughs> say you are as good as dead but Abimelech understood that the destruction will not stop with him and so he replied God he said would you destroy a nation this was a conversation between him and God and it is important that we are discerning and I will explain why shortly how that affects prayer because he was able to discern what the real weight of the matter was and he brought the nation before God and he says would you destroy a nation even though it is innocent didn't Abraham tell me she is my sister and she herself said he is my brother i have done this in the integrity of my heart and in the innocent of my hand this is another thing that we see the fact that you were innocent does not mean that you will not be held liable the fact that you did not know does not mean you will not be held liable the fact that you did it in the innocence of your heart does not mean that consequences cannot begin to come your way this is a classic example that the man did not know that the thing he received was a lie, that the money we received was stolen. We did not know. It doesn't mean consequences cannot follow us, which is one of... Huh. We will go to the reasons why we pray on another day, but for today, let us stay with the heart of the matter. They say, I have done this with the integrity of my heart. I am innocent, um, my heart, and the innocence of my hands. Verse 6, then God said to Abim like in a dream, yes, I know that you did this with clear conscience, and so I have kept you from sinning against me. This is why I did not let you touch her. Now return her to the uh, to the man. Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. He will pray for you, and you will live. But if you do not restore her, be aware that you will surely die. You and all who belong to you. Oh, thank you, Father. Mandele krasu vige zaga boga vaga zina zag zik zaga bene gan zaga vus kavan ziaga zige zuga zaga zaga baraz avige zaga zige zige zala gabara zine aragata zige baga boga vaga brand zavige brugo vaga zige zaga zuga varaga zine haragana. Father, we beseech you, you who is rich in mercy and full of loving kindness. For everything that we have touched in the innocence of our hearts and hands, in our naivety or in our anxiety to solve problems that has brought judgment, looming judgment and destruction in our camps, we speak for mercy. We speak for mercy. We speak for mercy. Mercy by the blood of the Lamb. Shakati nekanda kakana gekekatena gagakande gagagando gagagana. We touched things we were not supposed to touch, and it defiled us, and it took away our garments and our authority. Arika tatiana. The gates, our gates and our borders were open. Shadaga boga vriga zaga boga valadine. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. By the blood of the Lamb. Manga broga zige deka riga braga doga vraga zige diga raga dona vraga dina erigasa. Manka poke fika skando krasi graku vraga danasia. We ask for mercy. In the name of Jesus. Let the waters wash it away. Let the waters wash it away. Let the waters wash it away. Let our name be restored in your books and in the books of favor. Ah, let the eyes of kings be cleared and let them see clearly again as they should, as they ought to, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we see that the Lord said Abimelech should go to Abraham and Abraham should pray for him, for he is a prophet. God does not waste words. Mara sige brigadana krako boru zige varagadi intalika baragadina araganta. The word pray there was the word palel palel is a verb palel and it means to intervene to interpose to pray to judge to discern to stand in between and so god a number of things are important that is aligned with our preparation to pray this is the first time god is using the word pray and he is saying that abraham should Ha meka sega brega dine erigata raga mora sagavine eriga nagabanzo vrika skabele vanza kine araganzo vugovaga ezege zugazaga zaga zuke zike zaga zukazana brenza vaga bragazine eriga aragababando siviata agadina 
Akuta Akabena Kranze Kabine Erianga Ambalata Lord we stand in the gap Ekeriska for every member here for every one of us Kabele Krasi Gebine Araganto Varagate Briata Ebegabanto Ragadine Eregabata Vogavara Zige Vigavaka Rigadina Aragato Regabanga Vagazina Aragato Savai in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So two things are important. Number one, the fact that the Lord says the first time he uses the word prayer, is that he uses it in the sense of intercession, to stand in between Abimelech the king and between God the Almighty. And the fate of Abimelech the king for the, for the actions that Abimelech had done against Abraham has essentially done against the Lord because all sin is against the Lord. And he says, go and meet him because he's my friend. It is important to understand that we need to prepare to pray. <laughs> Let me put this in the easiest way I can. You are the prayer. <laughs> Not everybody can pray certain prayers. There are prayers that only specific people can pray. And so God did not tell Abimelech to pray or how to pray to him. God says, go and meet Abraham for he is a prophet. He is my friend. He is my mouthpiece. He speaks for me and he will do what? Let him pray. The word there, as we said, was palal. And one of the meaning of the words is to pray, is to discern and to judge, to discern and to judge, to discern, to judge, to interpose. To intervene and so what he was saying is that Abraham because of his relationship and because he has prepared himself because of his nature and his stature in God he would look at the situation he would discern the situation what is required and then he will be able to pass judgment whether it is mercy and in the name of the Lord Jesus I pass judgment of mercy I pass judgment of mercy tonight I pass the judgment of mercy over you some of us have been completely unscrupulous and crooked in our financial dealings. And tonight I pass the judgment of mercy. The enemy has put you in situation and has darkened your soul till the reason your soul has become so darkened and dulling, you don't even know when you do wrong anymore financially. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask for mercy and a cleansing and a quickening of your conscience. I ask that the blood of Jesus will purge your conscience from dead works. These things may not be seen, but they may just be unworthy of a priest or worthy of a servant of God to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. For years, God had prepared Abraham. And Abraham was prepared to pray. The Bible says God accepted Abel and his offering, his prayer. And God rejected Cain and his prayer. The person who plays football is a footballer. I, so it, I can suggest that the person who offers prayer is a prayer. He is the prayer. He is the, he's first the prayer before he offers the words. And so if the person is not right, the words are useless no matter how right they are. And so we must prepare ourselves to pray. Like someone says, people are praying for God to heal their nation when they cannot even <laughs> forgive their neighbor. You are not qualified to pray such prayers. Praise God. And so, Makatele Krasu Varagada, the Lord wants me to stay on this issue of the first time he used the word pray. The fact that one man had offended another unknowingly, and yet there was still indignation against that man. He had checked it and they had told him, they had lied to him, and ordinarily you would think that. The, the man should, nothing should come to the man, the sin should fall on Abraham. But in God's eyes, ignorance did not matter. This, you are, you are crossing a line that you should not cross. 
Anso Maka Regadina Aragato Varagati Eleganda Haragato Rugada Brihada Ragadine Hereganta Hakadine Eleganta Alika Prayer the precipice the basis of prayer is relationship. God did not tell he could speak to Abimelech, but Abimelech could not pray, could not intervene. He had to send him to someone he had a relationship with to stand in the gap between him and them and Abimelech before Abimelech could be restored and healed. Even though that person was the person who offended him, sometimes we're too emotional about spiritual things. The pastor or the brother may have offended you, but God is saying that is the person who needs to pray for you. You can humble yourself, or you can in your pride go and logically try to reason out and suffer some more. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I think we are, we have sufficiently dealt with that matter. And so I'll just go into some of the introduction of uh, my notes in preparing to pray. And hopefully next week we will continue as the Lord gives us grace. Now, when you sit with a billionaire who can solve all your financial problems in a minute, how do you begin that conversation? What do you say? The typical Nigerian person with all the pressure, <laughs> with all the things I had, my family. <laughs> That's a logical thing we will do. We will just go with all our problems and dump it right in front of him. <laughs> and remember that we said that the basis of prayer is relationship, friendship. Because Abraham was a friend of God. The prophet is a friend of God. And that's why he says, go and pray for him. So already we are removing ourselves from the equation of being able to pray. And so because of the way we are approached, like, <laughs> I love that parable of the marriage feast. He says, friend, how did you enter here? <laughs> Where is your garment? How did you get in here? And so because we, we entered the enterprise of prayer, we are disqualified from praying. And all we have done for the next five hours or three weeks is noise. It is not received because of the way we entered. And I will give you scriptural reference on what we need to do. When you come into God's presence, like we said, a billionaire who can solve all your problems, um, the first thing you need to do in preparing for that conversation and in engaging that conversation you do not make the, it all about you and your problems or your poverty. You do not make that conversation all about your problems and your poverty. And I, Sister Nessa is here, she's in finance, and this is something that, that is done. You don't make it. Sister Nessa, am I correct? You've worked with, um, um, she's done finance for years, you've done financial consulting, you have access to rich people, you don't make your first conversation or your second, or you don't push, oh, you can solve all my problem before you. They don't like such people. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. And it says, um, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, observe carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite. So it says, when you go before God who can help you, or when you go before a billionaire, a rich man who can solve a problem, it says, observe carefully. Like we said, the, the meaning of prayer, the first time God uses, one of the meaning of the words is discern. Discern. So it says, when you go there, discern. When you go to the first, the, the first thing you do is discern. What mood is God in? This evening, we didn't come in and shake a belly car. Oh, the president must go. Nigeria must change. God was not in that mood. So we discern. You discern. And then we worship. We discern. And then based on our discernment, because we, de despite the fact that we have urgent and pressing needs, we put a knife and we suppress that urgent and pressing thing so that we do not get disqualified and are cast out. Do not make the conversation all about your needs, your poverty, and your problems. 
And this seems counterintuitive because we have been taught prayer is the place we come to solve all our problems. So, I'm, oh, 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 Father God, thank you. Father God, I bless you. Father God, I bless you. Oh, yes, I enter into your presence with thanksgiving and into your cause with praise. Oh, Lord, uh, you, <laughs> you have done nothing. So, we need to discern. I take another scripture. There are moments, and I understand that there are, there are emergency moments where we definitely, um, let's say, <laughs> Um, you get to you get an accident. Something's happening. You need to pray for somebody. Something bad just happens, and you need to respond. We get that that in some, there are some emergency situation like God help me. You know you just need to go to it. We get that, but that cannot be your modus operandi all the time. Matthew chapter six verses um, ten to fifteen. Matthew chapter six verses nine to fifteen. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 15. Therefore, uh, this was the, uh, the Lord talking. It was about the Lord's Prayer. And he was talking to us about the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. In this manner, therefore, pray. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 15. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Now this scripture also follows the first scripture, which is the fact that the prayer, you do not begin and make it all about you and your problems. It starts by recognizing something very crucial. It says, our Father in heaven. You are, uh, the, the word Father is, you know, um, is both the, the, the originator and sustainer. And so you are starting the conversation by saying, God, I know you are responsible. And so you are coming from that, not coming with all the anger. Oh, I've been praying for two weeks and you haven't answered me. See the embarrassment I just feel. God, where are you? Who are you? Why are you? <laughs> no. Are you the accuser of the brethren? You'll be thrown out. That thing you are doing will not be considered prayer. There is a preparation. And so you come from that place of understanding and knowledge. You come as a man. Because it is men that pray. You come as a man. And men have understanding. And men have illumination. And so you come as a man. And, uh, we'll go there. You come as a man. And you come as a man with understanding that God is responsible. God is both your source and your sustainer. And God is in heaven. He is above you. And so you reverence his name. And you are saying that he has a reputation that is worthy. And so all of this you are saying is it is not yet still about you. And then you proceed to your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Now, that is two verses you have gone, verse 9 and verse 10. You have not mentioned anything about yourself. So you are still maintaining that don't make this conversation about you and your problem. Because your problem is a small, minute, infinitely minute subset of the larger problem that is God's problem, which is the problem of the world. All of the problems of every man and every situation are God's burdens. And yours is just one small one. So how do you feel if you are the MC, MD CEO of a company, you are thinking about various things and your, your, your staff just comes to quarrel you about 100 Naira transport money and just rake in and say, I paid extra money for the keke. You did not give me enough money. Raga, da, 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 da. And you are thinking about his salary. You are thinking about the, the customer. You would just be irritated and you would throw that. Your problem is so, it is so insignificant. We don't even know all my, I don't even know what my neighbor is doing right now. I can't see outside these four walls. How many people are in my compound? There are several flats, several families living here. And I don't know what their issues are. Now that is just small. Now imagine my streets. Now imagine the city. Imagine, imagine the world. All of this is God's problem. And you are ranting about your, your small hundred naira problem. <laughs> so that is not the way to enter prayer because you have been giving tongues doesn't mean you charge in anyhow like I said in one of the posts I posted when I put this out that passion and longevity length of prayer is not enough to qualify it as good prayer 
You don't charge in rakapa. No, sir. There are times where the warrior in you must rise. That is fine. The lion must awake. That is fine. But you must prepare yourself. Don't make it about you and your problems. And then he goes to verse 11. He said, give us this day our daily bread. There is just one sentence that is about your problem in these verses. It says, give us this day our daily bread. And then it moves to something that seems like your problem, but is not your problem. And it says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not let... <laughs> oh, God. On ordinarily, on the surface, it will seem like that is still about you when you're talking about forgiveness. But it's not. And in Matthew, we see that the first part of the prayer is not about our needs. The second part of the prayer, or shall we say the intersection, just one line is about us. Give us this day our daily bread. The next part of the prayer is about forgiveness. And the primary beneficiary of forgiveness, as Matthew implies, is not man, but God. The primary beneficiary of forgiveness is not man, but God. That is why Matthew ends by saying that God has, a, God has a special interest in forgiveness to the degree that he will not forgive you if you do not forgive others. This is important because the scripture tells us that for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, John 3, 17. The scriptures also says that God, has, God, was, um, that God was reconciling the world in, in himself, in Christ, not counting, sorry, I'll take that again. The scripture also says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men trespasses against them, as he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19. So when we look at the model of prayer, we realize that the second part where we are beginning to talk about forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us, that is not an issue that benefit us. We are keen into God's desire for the forgiveness of the whole human race. He wants everybody forgiven so that he can have a relationship with them, so that the enemy will not have accusation to bring against man. And so that part of the prayer, though it seems it's about you, it is not. It is about forgiving others so they have access to God. God has access to them and the enemy does not have access to them. And so it is also about God's being the beneficiary of that situation. And then he goes on to say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And then, like I said, it ends with talking about forgiveness. And so it is important for us to understand from these two scripture that we cannot make the enterprise of prayer primarily about us. When you go to one who can do solve all your problems, you cannot do that. And it seems frustrating. We just have about eight minutes. So let's just see what we can, how we can put things together and so we can have a complete body of knowledge that we can function with as we go back. And so it seems counterintuitive that when I go to the person who can solve my problem, I should not make the conversation all about my problem and all about my, the, my needs and my wants. And we've seen the reason why. And a few weeks ago, we've been going, we are going on the series, Why God Made the World. And one of the things we've showed very clearly that God did not, God made the world for his pleasure, for himself to enjoy. And so this world is not about man, but it's about God. It's about God's desire. You are in this world because God wanted something and he birthed you out in the same way you wanted to make a pot of soup and you went out to buy many ingredients. And so the fact that you seasoned and uh, marinated the chicken or the goat meat does not make the goat meat the king. The soup is not about the goat meat. The soup is about your pleasure. And so you may do all of the things and the goat meat may become even more tasty or the most tasty ingredient. You did that to the degree that you might enjoy it because God made man to enjoy man. He says all things were made for your pleasure. They are and were created. The world is not about you, sir. No, it is not. Your life is not even about you. It says you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life? Your life is not you. Your life is Christ. And so prayer cannot be about primarily about you. Because the one that was wrong at the fall, in the beginning there was no prayer. It was just a conversation between Adam and God. The Bible says in the cool of the day, he came in the garden. 
And when God, we, we saw it last week in Exodus 19, I think 18, 19 to, to 25, there about when God came, the first time we see God come in, in, in the Bible, we see him walk in the cool of the garden normally. There was no thunder or lightning. And that is how God wants to relate with man. But the second time God had to come, we see him on Mount Sinai with the children of Israel. He had to come with dark clouds, lightning and thunder, and the sapphire platform because he could not. But that he, he was constrained to come in that manner. That was not how he wanted to come. Because at the end of that conversation, he told Moses, tell the people to take an offering that they may build a tabernacle, that I may dwell in the midst of them, not in a mountain high up and far away. He always wants to dwell with us and again when he came at Jesus Christ he came as a simple man who walked in the midst of them and so the whole enterprise it is God who has been offended and so the enterprise of prayer is about restoring his creation that was that went astray and so God's primary oh thank you Lord thank you Lord and so we see Nike Brega Zaga Broga Ziga Zaka Tuna Vragazine Karagaru Duro Varagazine Erigana Gano Savanta. Though God could talk to Abimelech, Abimelech did not know him well enough to deal with the matter. And so he had to revere Abimelech to a prophet, to his friend, who understood God enough and who understood God's principle to make intercession for Abimelech. And to reconcile God to Abimelech so God can continue to see Abimelech prosper because that land needed to be governed and occupied until the time his people were needed, were ready to take it. So the first thing we do in preparing to pray when we come to a God who can meet all our needs is number one, don't make the prayer all about you, your need, your lack, your want, your sorrow. We see even in David, when he will come, lament, cry, 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 and all of that, he is doing it to let out steam, and then he will encourage himself in the Lord, and then he will engage the Lord. And then he will have profitable prayer. So such a man, the Lord said, that, that was a man after his heart. He understood the, ah, ah, the protocol of God's presence. The second thing you have to do in preparation in prayer is that you have to accept your status as the poor. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 8, it says, ah, a person's riches may ransom his life, but the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 3, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Proverbs says the poor person is tender. The rich person is rude. He can't speak anyhow. He said the rich answer. <laughs> oh God, the rich speak it harshly. He speaks, he doesn't, he doesn't owe anybody anything. But in the equation of prayer, in the equation of the divine, you are the poor. We are the poor. And so we cannot come in speaking rashly. We must come in the attitude of the one who is poor. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the place where everything is working. You want to enter. You want to enter. The whole goal of this, our praying, is not that we keep on having prayer points of need. It's but that we come to a place where we enter back into the ecosystem. We talked about that last week. Where we return to Eden, where everything works as it should. And one of the ways we get back there is by being poor in spirit so that we can enter. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so one of the things we do, it says through tribulations will we enter the kingdom. What does that mean? Does that mean we continue suffering and suffering and suffering endlessly to enter the kingdom? No, sir. What it means is that take your tribulation and use them as a doorway to enter the kingdom. Because when you are in tribulation, instead of going to God with railing accusation, you humble yourself and say you are the mighty God, the faithful one, you are the just one, you are the one who does all things well. You have never set out on anything that you you did not prepare from the beginning to the end. You declare the end of a thing before the beginning. I know I am prepared for. Oh Lord, I bless you. Wherever I may have erred, wherever I have missed you, to have brought myself in this situation, I repent of it. I know that you have no hand in this. And you begin to humble yourself. You begin to take the position of the poor, not the one who speaks harshly and brings accusation against God. Hallelujah.
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for stirring us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mate Brogoziga Baraside Dara Doro Baraside Dara. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I, I wanted to, two things are very important here. And I'll, I'll use that to round up. It's eight o'clock already. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Does he never trust the pastor when he says he's rounding up? <laughs> I will become trustworthy. <laughs> ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, back to the first scripture, Genesis um, 27, all the way down to 17 and all of that. It says, go and meet Abraham because he is a prophet. He will pray for you. Abraham was a friend of God. Now, when the rich man who can solve all your problems wants to become your friend, has opened the door of friendship, you don't go in that door throwing all your problems. You make the conversation about him as we have seen from what we've read. The second thing is do that you accept your position as the lower one. You don't begin to brag. When he's saying, ah, you know, he's talking about his um, a private jet. You don't say, yes, yes, I know. You know, last week I, you know, I took a drop. I took Uber first class. You will look ridiculous. <laughs> How many of us, you've known that you, you've seen poor people who are bragging. It is revolting. You want to help them, but their arrogance is stinking. And so you take your place, your place as the poor, as the lesser one in that. Even though we are sons of God, we are sons to the degree that he is the one who created, sustains us. He is both our origin and our sustainer. And knowing that he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, he says a broken and a contrite heart. Now because God requires friendship with us, there are two things God is looking for for those who will be friends with and who he will call prophets and friends that he may use them to stand in the gap for the other. Most rich people that you know and you can ask anybody in finance, they look for loyalty and selflessness. They look for friends who are loyal. When the rich man comes to become, makes a poor man friend, he's looking for loyalty in that person. And which is why sometimes it seems as if in the whole process of prayer, that the whole, the, 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 the equation is not making sense. Let's look at Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Uh, okay, just go there. Luke. Luke chapter, sorry, 18 from verse 1. And Jesus told a parable about their need to pray at all times and not lose heart. A certain town, there was a judge who, was neither, who neither feared God nor respected men. And there was a widow in that town who kept appealing to him, Give me justice against my adversary. Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect men, yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice. Then she will stop wearing me out with her perpetual request. And the Lord said, Listen to the words of the unjust judge. Will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he continue to defer their help? I tell you, he will promptly carry out justice on their behalf. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now, this is where prayer falls apart for a lot of us. We see clearly that the rich man has something he's looking for in the prayer, and the widow in need has something she's looking for in the prayer. What is the widow looking for? Justice. What is the widow as the rich man looking for, or God in this instance looking for? He is looking for faith and loyalty. 
somebody who will be loyal and humble despite the fact that he is not responding as the way he thinks God should respond. That's a very funny queer text in the sense that he says, will, uh, verse 7 says, will God not bring about justice for his elector? Let me look at the King James Version also so that um, we can get it. Verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect to which cry to him day and night unto him? Though he be along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, will he find faith on earth? It's a very strange text, verse 7. Shall not God avenge his elect, which cry to him day and night unto him, though he be along with them? He's saying he will, he will, will he not avenge in the same breath? He's saying he will come speedily. And in the same breath, he's saying he will also take time. And then he is saying that, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, will the Son of Man, when the Son of Man comes, shall he not find faith? Shall he find faith on the earth? So we have what we are looking for, which is speedy attention. And God has what he's looking for, which is friendship. And the people God can be friends with are people that trust him implicitly, people that are loyal, and people that have faith in his character, not just in his capacity. The, loyal, the lady did not care in question, did not care for the judge. She knew that she wanted justice and she knew what the judge wanted was peace of mind. He did not want to be bothered. And she continued bothering him until the judge was compelled. And it is, it's, a, it's a interesting matter that God compares himself with an unjust judge. Because in this story, he wants us to know that sometimes he deliberately delays our answers so that we might be transformed, so that out of us he might produce loyalty, it might produce humility. It might produce faith. And at that point, we have become his friends who trust him because he says what he is looking for is those who will trust in faith. Will he find faith on the earth? And so while you're going to God looking for, we said earlier on that one, don't make it about you. Two, accept your place as the lower one. And three, understand what God is looking for in all of this. And in this scripture, God is looking for your transformation. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. Our souls have been so damaged and God is looking to restore it. God is looking to restore it. He says, will he find faith? Will he find people who trust him in the earth? when he returns. Praise God. Because of time, I don't want to drag it anymore. I don't want to take it any more than this for today. We will break it down some more and go into why we pray, reasons for prayer, and all of that. But today, we must put as the third issue what God requires, what he's looking for in all of this, which is people who trust him more, trust his character, trust his person, honor him more than his power. Many of us trust the power of God more than his character. And God is trying to move us from that place because that is the court of the Gentiles. They know the power of God and they come. That is the court of children. They know the power of God, but he has called us to become mature sons. And the son, the one who is going to rule, necessarily needs to have confidence in the character and the nature of his father. If not, he cannot make decisions for the family because he will only make decisions from the place of what he can do. He says, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. Young men only make, make um, uh, decisions from strength, what they can do, what my family can do. But he says, I write unto you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. Where The fathers are departing, and some of us are becoming fathers of a new generation, fathers of a new move of God, fathers of a new business. And to be able to do that, we must understand him who is from the beginning. We must have trust in the character and the nature and the person of God. We must be rooted in him and so when we prepare ourselves like this to pray then we can now pray because we are now finally in a position to discern the situation properly thank you Holy Spirit thank you Holy Spirit 
Many times we come to God. Let's begin to pray now. Many times we come to God and we're rushing with all our anxiety. And we're praying from anxiety. But anxiety is what got us into the problem. Your anxiety gives you motivation out of fear. And you began to do things you should not necessarily do. Kavaga zege belegana karida brasi katalika baga zuke vine anska zonza aski zonza gaza zeguzuske viaka zege zus kavana zige zige zaga zianai. And now you want God to act in your anxiety. He does not respond to your anxiety. And so God says, I want to cure the root of the problem. It's anxiety and trying to work things out by yourself that got you here in the first place. And so God begins to drag out the process so that the anxiety will die, so that you will know peace, so that you will come to understanding, and so that you will humble yourself before him, so that you will remember that this is not all about you, that you are just a small part of it, so that you will forgive others, so that you will return to harmony and the kingdom of God. Because it will surprise you, God does not want to be answering your prayers all the time. He wants you to be a prayer answerer who will answer other people's prayers. Who will be a, he doesn't want to deliver you all the time. He wants you to be a, for out of Zion shall come deliver us. He made you a millionaire so that you can be a prayer answerer to other people. That's the whole process. The rich so that the rich can help the poor. The poor become rich and they begin to help others. And he begins to delight in seeing us answering others and, 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 and participate in the joy of answered prayers. Holy. Thank you, Father. We prepare our hearts that we may be able to discern. Say you pray, you ask how not, and you have not, because you ask that you might consume it upon your lust. Ah, palal, palel. One of the, the, the meanings of the word prayer he used was to discern. If your heart, if you do not prepare yourself, you will not be able to discern what is required. And if you cannot discern, you cannot ask a right. You will ask a wrong. You will ask a miss. And you will never have it. And you and the people and God will all be frustrated. And so it is important for you to prepare yourself so that you can discern. And from discerning, you can also pass judgment on the matter. God is not trying to frustrate you. Is building a ruling class. Nobody gives fools. We are in Nigeria. We see what happens when fools become ruling classes. And so God will not hand over power to a to set up fools. No, sir. You see local government people doing foolish things all across, from the federal to the local. We see. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord will ha have me emphasize this point that prayer means to discern and to judge. You can't hear. Please help me get the phone. I think my phone has. It. 
Sorry, I think the network went off at a point in time. Melissi of a Kumara civilian to see if a summer Kufara see a lotta see a Namele. She nesu sefiati. I see Nema like a Finnish non civil arte. She so sefine Kimbran sifiniati. O loco fanani ariate so braga viniati. A shinne latis via duasio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So, discern and to judge. The first time the Lord used the word prayer, it meant to discern, to judge, and to stand in between, to interpose, to discern. Ah, so bring your phone to me. Just carry everything to me. Sorry, the network keeps going off, so I'll just um, change the position. Menta zaga boga vara ziga dina aragatino seka duna bara zina maraka boru zaga vina eri gaza gabo goza vaga zina zanga zuga zaga ziga zaga mrasi verianta zuka bara zina hasa gebianta masa gebele dushna hasi gebayante. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, in summary, gama shiga rado vraka. Briga, Sega, Bega, Moga, Zaga Doga Baga, Shege Biga Braga, Braga Zuga Viga, Braga Zuga Vaka, Seke Bego Boga Vaga Raga He anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. My cup runs over. Thank you, Lord. I feel ah Mara Sige Briga Raga Borozina Atike Bino Guvanaga Braga Zuga Varazine Erianto Zagabane Ante. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because some of the things they can build a guba raga zika dusha nara gazi hakabaru ziva naga jele tulu guru vara zine branza vaga dusha kebiri ara gaza gaduru vara gazine ara gaduru vara gazine eri gado vara embasu vala kishna si. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So in rounding up, so that it gives your mind direction and we do not feel hopeless. Number one, we need to prepare ourselves to pray because one of the things prayer means is to be able to discern and to judge and to stand in between. To discern, to judge and to stand in between. So if we do not prepare ourselves, we will not be able to discern. And if we cannot discern, we cannot judge. If we cannot judge, we cannot accurately stand and is an incessor between God and the situation, between God and the person, between God and our lives and our loved ones. We cannot do that because we may not be able to discern what the issues are properly. We are not be able to discern God's mood. We are not become to discern God's heart. We are not be able to we are not able to discern the things that are missing the things that are required in that situation so it is important and one of the ways we begin to prepare ourselves to do to do that is number one realize that prayer is not all about us and our need it is not primarily about us our lack our needs and our hurts prayer is much more Prayer is centered about the one who has called us into friendship. Prayer is about the king and his kingdom. And yes, our problem, as troublesome as they are, are a small subset, in an insignificant subset of the problems that the Lord has to deal with because he has to deal with every human being on the planet, every blade of grass, every animal, every system, every angel, every demonic entity. His problems, he, the issues he has to deal with are so huge. And so we must come with the face of a man because it is men that pray we must come with understanding and discerning and enlightenment that this is God's position and we must approach him we must approach him as the owner of a large business who has complex to things to deal with and we cannot begin to shout and scream with our hundred naira problem it is wrong we will not be able to discern what is needed number two we must take our place as the lesser blessed are the poor in spirit as for they shall see God number three we must discern what the Lord is looking for and we must be the ones he's looking for friends and so we must so trust and confident and we must endure to be able the widow in the story in Luke chapter 18 from verses 1 she had to endure to be able to get what she wanted and so we must able to we must be able to endure even when God seems to deliberately delay and he is delaying he's saying he is not ah oh, thank you lord 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Like I said, that scripture has a contradiction. It may seem as, he's, as though he is delaying, but he is coming at exactly the right time because he is producing a fruit in you. He says the one that bears fruit, he will bear much fruit. And I'm reminded of a vision I had about a month ago of the Lord in my garden, a gardener in my garden. I was wondering other people and in the meeting were having wonderful visions of angels, of the Garden of Eden, of flowers, of all kinds of encounters. And I was seeing a gardener in my garden wearing overalls. And the Lord says, the one that bears more fruit, I am pruning it to bear more fruit. And so you may come from a season where you seem like you just shone. Your prophetic gift just began to shine and suddenly difficulty. It seemed like you were breaking through and suddenly difficulty pruning. And so we go to God in prayer because remember he told us the second key for this season. The first was joy and praise. The second was a situational awareness that we are in his hand. The third was we should dig deeper. And so we dig deeper to understand what is this. Today I was dealing with a situation like, I know God, this situation has started. And I began to pray. I said, where have I missed you? And the moment my mind shifted to God solve this problem, intervene in this issue. So God, where have I missed you? I acknowledged that God was not wrong. And immediately my mind opened to see what the issue was. And so I could spend three more months on that issue and never have had it solved because my mindset was wrong. You have not because you ask not. So in because of time, I'm just going to ask anyone on site or online if you have any comment or anything, let us know so that we can we can speak to them.